Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel, back up here in Brooklyn, New York. And today I met up with Josh. Josh has an ambulance conversion. I've been around RVs for 20 years and I've never seen a conversion as intricate as what Josh has done here today. I just spent the last hour walking through this thing and I was wowing the whole time. And Josh, welcome to New Jersey Outdoor hey. Adventures. Hey, what's up? Uh, welcome to my truck. I converted this ambulance over the last year. It took five months, I think. And let's take a tour. This is the side door. There's also back doors we'll get to. Uh, welcome, welcome in. Uh, <clears throat> lay of the land here. Here's the uh, shower and bathroom set up. And then <clears throat> kitchen, uh, bed will fold out in the back, we'll see that. Little bench and a workstation here. Before we get into all the details, uh, I built it because um, I built it like early pandemic. Nobody knew what was going on early pandemic and I kind of like was panicking and I ended up making a hasty decision to like build an apocalypse vehicle and I ended up with this. And like it's nice for going on climbing trips and traveling, whatever. Uh, it's pretty relatively recently finished, so I haven't taken it on a lot of trips yet. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> Bathroom, uh, pass through door to the front, to the cab. We drive and stuff up there. Nothing crazy going on up there. Right, I'll leave this open so I can stand over here. Uh, shower. Shower, and you can flip this little diverter here and use this guy if you like um, over here uh, or down at the bottom this is the shower pan this is like a custom made laser cut plate um, with like this is a, just an Amazon um, stainless steel shower gutter that I had someone weld into this plate um, for the shower pan and then here is our toilet this is a composting toilet. Um, I haven't set it up yet, to be honest. I just haven't needed it. There's like all these bathrooms everywhere. Um, it's got this little, these are like the locking drawer slides that you get. And I like took off the little rubber handles on the ends and I put this bar across so you can slam it with your feet. These little rubber springs, uh, if you notice, uh, these are what keep this door up from falling down. That's what keeps tension on the top of the door so it doesn't fall. Uh, above the door, just a drawer with storage for bathroom stuff. Right. And then this also slides down and that's my laundry machine for laundry. Uh, it's a washer and dryer. Oh, oh, look at this. Wow. <laughs> this is how new this is. Um, yeah, here's my exhaust fan for the bathroom. For those steam and such. Uh, oh, here's the door. Yep. So, um, the bathroom and like everything in this build is all built with extruded aluminum. Um, like 8020, but not 8020, like off brand 8020. Um, and that's just nice because it's light and modular and like sort of easy to build with, but still a pain. Um, over here is my control center. Um, this is just a tablet. Let me see if I can turn brightness up on here. Nope, it's all the way up. Okay. Um, so a lot of van builds will have like a control center of some kind with a bunch of switches and, and readouts and monitors for your battery information your diesel heater, for your lights, um, and it ends up being like a big panel that takes up a lot of space. Um, so I wanted to see if I can like integrate everything into one nice system. Um, and I've done that using Home Assistant, which is a home automation platform, open source home automation platform. So like there's a lot of people working on it and it's got a lot of features and it over time it, it's ended up being like really easy to use. So everything is coming through here. Um, you've got your battery information. Can you see this at all on the camera? Okay. <laughs> you've got your battery readouts um, 
This is just some information I'm choosing to display, but like there's so much I could be displaying here. An alarm system that'll like lock the doors and like send me a text message if the doors are open for some reason while they're locked. Um, uh, this is lighting, <clears throat> so this is controlling all the ceiling lights here, and there's also <clears throat> these kick lights along the side, and the light under the counter here. Yeah. There's also like the floodlights on the side, there's the emergency lights which are fun. I have like a program written here, if I'm sleeping in here and it's like completely blacked out then it's like kind of hard to wake up so I can set an alarm time and it'll like slowly turn on the lights to wake me up. Um, and you can like write other automations like when the door is opened and it's dark in here then turn on the lights. Um, or uh, the outside cabinet doors, when you open those doors it'll turn the lights on in those cabinets. Stuff like that. There's like, there's so much you can do. Um, another tab here is climate. This is like temperatures, the control for the diesel heater. Um, there's a heated floor in here, but it kind of doesn't work very well. I don't know. This is the exhaust fan for the bathroom and for the stove. Temperatures, graphs, um, data, and then plumbing, uh, tank levels and temperatures, and then all my valves are uh, motorized, so you can control them all from here. And your water pumps. Uh, tank heaters, pipe heaters, yeah. And then uh, here's a tab for my camera system, which is down right now, but you can see it here. So I've got these hooks. They're hooks. Nothing crazy. I've got a trash can. I found it in the garbage on the street. You can find a lot of good stuff in the garbage in New York City. Here's this pantry that slides out. I got this idea from somebody else on YouTube who like put a pantry in a similar place in an ambulance build. So it's just got junk. Walls and ceiling, cedar, um, like the Home Depot stuff, with like quarter inch cedar paneling. On the walls it's backed by another quarter inch of Baltic birch plywood for structure and so that it's like one panel that you can unbolt and take off and access behind if you want to do that. Uh, here uh, this is a little door for the tank for the diesel heater. It, like slides out if you if you finagle it. This bar is original to the ambulance. I put it back in here. It's nice. Um, all right, kitchen. Here's the kitchen. Uh, refrigerator. Uh, isotherm 18, I think. I don't know. One of the drawer ones. One of the like smaller ones. Induction cooktop. Uh, yeah, I think this is the only vertical oriented one you can get. I haven't seen any other than this one, um, so a lot of people use this one. And you can also pull it out if you want, if you want to cook outside, get an extension cord. That's my outside cooking setup. Power throughout, um, 120 GFCI, and then USB power. And this is uh, 12 volt power, like a barrel connector for 12 volts. Just if you want to wire up some car appliances or something, or I'm gonna build a like fan insert module that goes into that window for better exhaust, um, and that can be powered off of this 12 volt. Moving along, oh, oh the exhaust, right? This is a uh, exhaust for the stove. So this uses the same exhaust fan as the bathroom. So you can either close that vent off by twisting this in. Or you can also close this vent off with this knob. You can see that going um, to divert the flow wherever. It works okay. Um, and you can also kind of use the shower vents to like get a little bit of air circulation in here. Um, but it's not quite enough, so that's why I'm doing the fan module in here. And also, this exhaust hood like kind of needs to extend over the stove to like capture all of the fumes coming up. But it works okay. Um, in the ceiling, in addition to the lights, there's also speakers, a speaker system. I've got like a Chromecast audio that I can connect to from my phone. And then subwoofer down here next to the toilet. Moving on, kitchen. Sink, a little cutting board. I got this, which um, is actually, I didn't think I would need it, but it's real nice for like uh, drying off uh, dishes if you've just washed them. It like keeps them off the ground so they can dry nicely. Uh, that's the faucet, and this is filtered water. Yep. And then we got drawers. 
Um, these are not populated yet because if they have too much weight in them, then like if you if you crank the wheel too hard, they'll fly open. So I still need to like come up with some latch to keep them closed. This one has a funny cutout for the for the trap on the sink, and this one is in front of the sink, so it's tiny. Cabinets. Here's some cabinets. Uh, you can see my exhaust duct and all my kitchen junk mostly, and other stuff. Yeah, so this is all more um, extruded aluminum. Um, like this way of making cabinets and doing your build out in general is real nice because it ends up being super skeletal and light and open. Like there's a lot of space in here. Like you get the full volume of the cabinet and it's just like a frame and a couple panels of wood and it's, it's nice. It's relatively easy. These doors are quarter inch Baltic birch. Um, plywood which I don't know if I would recommend using because there's like not a lot of meat for these screws to grab onto so it can be fragile or it can be delicate to put together um, and you also need to find some really straight pieces so they're not funny there's an oven electric oven make pizza and stuff and whatever another cabinet short cabinet this is one of the outside compartments I didn't bother covering it up. Down here, I just have a little cubby. There's a there's a pillow in there. This. Uh, well, let's open the door here. So this is just an access for the temperature port of the temperature of the of the water port on the outside here. Yeah, we'll get a better view of that when we circle around the outside. Um, oh, did I show you these drawers? These are also drawers. These are my window inserts that, if these are closed, they like just snug right in and you can get it completely dark in here. Uh, and they also like fit perfectly in here. It's a joy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, these panels are just magneted on. You can see um, this is the... LED strip for the kick lights, and then I've got tubes for that water port on the outside. And they pop back on, like that. All right. This is a uh, like open cubby area for whatever I want to store. I thought about building some sort of drawer module, but it's actually nice just to have an open area to, to put junk, whatever. Um, so. And the way this works is this whole can counter section will, if you crimp it real hard, you can you can unlatch it and it all pops down. I can show you this. Um, so you can see how this latch system works. Ooh, it needs a little bit of lubrication, but yeah. Uh, so the idea with this is you drop the counter, um, put a put a pad here. Let me get. <laughs> Here's my crash pad. <laughs> um, this is for bouldering, but conveniently it fits just perfectly right here, and it's so good that I I just have to show you. There it is. Tuck this in. And you've got like a second couch for two more people. So like when you open up this space, you can fit like seven or eight people in here comfortably. And you can like cram a little bit more in on the floor. It's great. All right. Uh, this is another cubby. Some rope, some pillows, shoes. And then this is the bed system. I've got this platform that just like unhooks from here, folds out. And then, oh, we need the counter, we need the counter. Okay, I thought we could leave it down, but we can't leave it down. Okay.
that's that. You've got a platform. And then right now I've just got this like Japanese style futon with a tatami mat. At home I was experimenting with alternative mattresses, so I had this. So this is just what I'm using in here. Um, yeah, that's the bed. Real simple. Uh, maybe you want a little bit more thickness if you like prefer like a lot of gush in your mattress, but I like this. And it folds, and push, and we, yeah, and we hook. I got a little bungee, and that's it. Um, more cabinets up here. I've got some guitars in here, a cajon. Um, there's a lot of like music stuff in here because uh, I've actually had like a couple like little tiny open mics in here with friends from New York and it's real cozy and fun and nice um, and like fun to see how many people you can cram into this space and it's also like such a unique experience because it's so intimate and you can like put a bunch of strangers in here and after an hour they're all like really good friends <laughs> it is great um, I've got some like cushions and pillows from Ikea. Uh, under here is more storage for climbing junk and tools and and whatnot. Moving around to the workstation. This is uh, my garbage stool from the garbage, but it's what I'm using for now. You could like put a proper chair in here, but uh, here's my monitor. I've got this little latch this captivator that just keeps it steady while driving um, so this like opens up and grabs it uh, and its arm gives you a lot of range of movement like you could watch it from bed if you wanted uh, it's nice um, so you're working here da 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 the magic trick to this desk is as follows. This pulls up, these arms swing away, and then we just pop this in. And you've got a little surface, sorry, to, to do work from. And you can also use this table as, uh, as like you can open it up and have a bigger surface for guests or whatever. And then the real trick is, we can go from like this sitting height all the way up to a standing height so you can stand and work, which I like to do. I've designed this to be like, it was, it was kind of very hard and annoying, but after much wrestling with it, I got it to go up to like the parameters of my body, like all the way up to my standing height and down to my preferred sitting height, which is like a lot lower than a lot of desks. Um, and it was also hard because it's such a constrained design because this is the like back of the aluminum cabinet that is on the outside of the truck. This is where all the plumbing is. So there's like two and a half or three inches of space here to fit this whole mechanism. Um, so there's these little linear rails here, um, ball screws, and then the motors are like recessed up into the top of the desk. Yeah. That was fun to make. Um, and here is the, this is like the controller that runs the desk and a voltage converter and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, let me put this down. Um, what can I say? The floor is, um, just like a roll-out vinyl sheet floor. Um, I like was gonna do some vinyl planking, but I just read too many horror stories about that stuff like popping up when when the temperatures change. So I went with like a fake floor, and it's fine. It's pretty fine. Pop this back in. Yeah. This is kind of hanging out right now because we're parked sideways, but. It tends to be fun. So that's pretty much the inside. Um, um, but with an ambulance, we've also got a ton on the outside with these outside compartments. So 
let's see what I've done with that. Uh, here's my crash pad that I ejected. <laughs> um, we'll start with this one. Um, so this is that pantry that slides out and can we push it? Yeah. There's the toilet, there's that drawer, laundry, and then there's a little bit of extra space down underneath, another storage compartment. Um, this is not dissimilar to how this cabinet is typically used in ambulances because there's it tends to be a pass-through cabinet here um, that you can access like from here and from the inside. So that's that. Uh, oh, let's get this. There's a tiny cabinet here, just with some junk, and extra engine coolant, and diesel. Um, haven't, yeah, haven't like built out it yet. Over here, this is. That's the drain for the gray water, and also like there's the diesel heater exhaust there. Um, so like again, I can drain this just by flipping a switch on that tablet or my phone, and it'll. Pull out. Another storage cabinet. This is just like leftover material from the build. Uh, but once I find a home for this, I'm sure that you can like build out shelves in here and have a nice gear closet. Yeah. As we're swinging around, here's the back. There's like outlets for outside here and a hose mount. That's that. This is where I keep the crash pad. And then getting to water, this is the plumbing cabinet. Um, this is 55 gallons of fresh water. 5 gallon water heater, which runs on both electric and uh, it has an engine coolant pass through, so you get free hot water from driving, which is nice. These are intake filters, so you can filter the water before it even gets to the tank if you don't trust your water source for whatever reason, or so you can like intake from a river or something. There's an onboard intake pump in addition to a second pump just for the inside plumbing water pressure. Um, so the, the way that would work, either if you want to like hook up to shore water or if you want to pump from a river or something and you're parked and you don't want to leave these doors open, then you open this hatch and you run a hose up and connect it to here or here. I just have this for reasons. And then this is like the whole block of all the, all the valves for different setting different states and configurations for how you want the filter to go, what pumps you want to bypass, if you want to even bypass the fresh tank completely and just go straight off of uh, shore water. Um, and then, oh yeah, you've got a, a little plug here. If you want to gravity fill straight into the tank, you can do that too. These filters are just for the uh, drinking water, the little, little faucet by the sink. The tiny one. Uh, pressure tanks. Those are pressure tanks. Uh, a UV filter for intake. And this is an air compressor that came with the ambulance for if you want to use any air tools, uh, which I used a lot while I was building the inside, like a nail gun. And also just to have a blower is nice to clean stuff off. Um, and it's also for the air horn, which is very loud and fun. Uh, Electrical is in this cabinet. Here's a shore power cover, which um, came with the ambulance. It's cool because it has, uh, see this third pin in the middle? It's so that, so when you plug it in, that pin gets depressed. And when you start the engine, it pushes out so it can eject the cable. So you can be plugged in and then start the engine and then just go without worrying about it. It's kind of cool, yeah. Um, this is the electrical cabinet. There's a lot going on in here, but it's two, salvaged Tesla Model S battery modules, um, which in total, I'm not using the full potential state of charge range. I'm using like 70% of it to be safe and for like longevity of the batteries. So I'm getting an effective like 5,000 watt hours or something. And there's four solar panels on the roof. That's 
1600 watt hours or 600 watts of solar on the roof on a day like today should be getting most of that here's the charge equipment the solar charge controller this charges off the alternator when the engine is running this is like the controller for the Victron equipment and then a 5000 watt inverter so you can run most of the stuff at once I've also like when I was working on this truck I also like this is the first thing I did so I could power my build while I was doing it and I was using tools off of it I was welding off of it well, let's start over here this is a selection of the electrical cabinet that was in the ambulance build before so there was like a lot more than that but I pared it down to just that which is the important stuff for like locking the doors and um, the emergency lights fun and important things like that um, and also like there's some connections that come through here that needed to be preserved so the electrical cabinet was on the other side of this wall so I had to like cut everything and move it out and put it back up here this is a little computer that's running home assistant which is controlling everything and then it's on a network here with this like Philips Hue bridge for controlling the lights and the Wi-Fi router and the cameras and the Victron equipment is all on like a local area network um, and then that computer is running into an Arduino over USB which handles the some inputs and outputs so that's how all of these relays connect to the to the PC and those relays are switching on the pumps um, these lights in the cabinets, um, heaters, all the things that need to be switched, locks for the doors, a lot of stuff. Um, this thing is like, a, you like never use this, but this is for like a contingency edge case where, for example, like you've parked the truck in a garage for a long time and it's not getting any sunlight and the system is like slowly depleting the battery over time. And the thing with these uh, Tesla batteries, it's just like raw lithium cells, so there's no battery protection going on in here. So the thing about lithium cells, if, if they get undercharged too much, then like it'll destroy the battery. It's done. So like you don't want it to keep draining. So if it goes under some critical threshold, then what'll happen is it'll say, oh no, and it'll switch this relay off it's a, like a bi-stable relay, which means it doesn't need any active power to keep it on one way or the other. You just give it power on one side and it's on, and give it power on the other side and it's off. Um, so it'll send a signal to this relay, it'll cut it off, and then the battery is completely disconnected from everything. And then the problem with that is when you disconnect the battery, if the solar panels are connected to the battery, um, no, if the solar panels are connected to the solar charge controller, but the charge controller isn't connected to the battery, it'll damage the charge controller. So you also need to disconnect the solar panels. So that's what this one does. Um, so what these two buttons do is they reset that connection um, for those two relays. And then this one is for the battery heat. It's also like a contingency thing where if the battery doesn't have enough power to heat itself, or if it's too cold to safely discharge to heat itself, then you can switch this and you can heat the battery off of the vehicle battery. Yeah, and then over here, these are the 120 breakers. Um, this is a amplifier for the speakers. This is the camera system, the 360 camera system, and then that's the cellular router. And yeah, I think that's it. And like there's fuses and stuff here. Uh, some fuses back here. Yeah, that's that. And then, what do I say about this? This is my truck. <laughs> it's a... Uh, Duramax engine, six point something liters, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> um, it's a big engine, too big for any reasonable person to work on, so I have like not worried about it at all. It runs fine. I've taken it to a mechanic and they say it's fine. Um, speaking of, the truck itself uh, is in like pretty good shape. It's a 2005 Chevy Kodiak and it only had 81,000 miles on it when I got it. Um, so I like paid a little bit extra for a nicer condition truck, but I think that's like worth doing when you're gonna like spend this much time 
and money investing into a conversion like this. That's good that you mentioned that because you know, building something to this level and this quality, you want to start off with a chassis that's going to last a really long time. Yeah, and you not want a good platform. Be in, at the point <laughs> where uh, you put all this money into build and the chassis is completely shot out. Yeah, yeah. So it's in pretty good shape. So on the outside, there's also uh, these uh, on ambulances. They're called scene lights. They're just floodlights on the outside for illuminating the scene. And there used to be these like big halogen lamps that like pulled like 10 amps and they're crazy. And I pulled those out and I pulled out the reflector and I, I like squeezed in this, these LED floodlights. And let me show you, it's like kind of bright outside, but let's see how much we can see them. Yeah. Um, and these, these are fun because you can change the temperature of them and you can make the color whatever you want and when it's dark outside these are like absurdly bright <laughs> they will light up the entire neighborhood it's great um, and then the the emergency lights are also cool my favorite is this uh the light bar on the back <laughs> with the with the uh the stingers okay um Oh, yeah. And then the lights on the inside also can change color to be whatever, which goes for the kick lights and the counter lights and everything. Josh, thank you very much for taking the time today to give us more of your awesome creation. I'm totally blown away. I've been yeah, around these you. RVs for a long time and DIY camper builds. And some of the things that you have done in here, some of the products you use, I've never seen before. So this is all new to me and I'm sure to my viewers. Can you walk us through a little bit about like time frame, how long this took to take, some of the special tools you might have needed to buy, and also budget? Sure. So time frame, I spent like a month or more just doing like research and design before I even bought the truck, um, including like... Uh, like catting out different ambulance box designs to like try and figure out which to buy and what the interior layouts would be like and how I would because the design of this is like really constrained by how the cabinets are because they push into the inside space so you need to build around the wheel wells you need to build around these cabinets um, on the back and on the front um, and so I spent a lot of time designing just like figuring out how I wanted to lay it out and do the design. And then after that, it was like five or six months of building full time. Um, budget, I spent, the truck was listed for $20,000. I paid $18,500. And then in total, including the truck, I spent seventy or $75,000 on everything. Um, special tools and processes. Um, something I did a lot was like um, sheet metal fabrication where you can just design a part and then order to get laser cut. And often this like isn't as expensive as you think, especially if you like need a lot and you can buy in large volumes. Um, um, and you can also get these parts CNC folded. Um, so that's how I got the shower pan together. That's how like all these all these brackets are that are holding these panels in between the the, the extruded aluminum rails and like holding the walls together um, and that's how these brackets that are holding the motor assemblies for the desks are and I think there's other stuff like brackets on the roof like brackets everywhere it's really nice to be able to laser cut stuff and just order it and it saves time because you don't have to fabricate stuff yourself so I did that a lot um, other tools, I don't know, just like a lot of stuff, doing some, all the hand tools, power tools, I did a bit of welding on the inside of the box. I had to reinforce the ceiling a little bit, which was interesting, like the way the ceiling was designed, it allowed it to bow down in the middle a little bit, um, so I added some support braces, and also welding in rails for these rails, which which go along the whole length of the of the truck, and that's what everything is mounted to. These rails just 
these bolt to the frame of the box and all the build out is just bolted to these rails. There's two on the ceiling, uh, two on the walls high, and two on the walls low. And that's what everything is mounted in with. And then it was also, you have CAD experience, you could program certain things. So that's yeah. not stuff so, that I'm capable of doing. Um, but like, it is something anyone, it just, it's just the amount of like, time you're willing to invest in figuring this stuff out. I have not actually set up a home assistant system before. And it did take a lot of hours of like figuring out how this thing goes together, um, especially because it's pretty unconventional to put a home assistant system on wheels. Like most people don't do that. It doesn't actually make a difference, but it's like slightly different in use case. Um, yeah, and it helps to like know some electronic stuff and wiring in order to set up some of the inputs and outputs on the home assistant system, but. Um, you got five months of your labor, <laughs> yeah. uh, another couple months of research, so you have 70000 plus in cash uh, in a project, and then you have your time, too, and that's yeah, the usually time not is, accounted for when the time people are building stuff. easily worth significantly more than the materials, for yeah. sure. It's just so much work. It's so much work that, like, I didn't, people always say in these, in these videos, people always say, like, this is going to take longer than you think it is. This is going to be more work than you think it is. And... That's true, but like, time six. <laughs> like, I would not have done this if I could have anticipated accurately how much work this would be. It's just so much. I would have just like, stayed home, or bought something, or like bought a van and built something real simple. I'm, I'm amazed because all the challenges you had to overcome in the process of building this that caused the delays, there must have been so much new things that you learned. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you're going to use some of that stuff in uh, future builds, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, all, all the experience you have making stuff is, is cumulative. So, like, you learn something on everything. And this project is a culmination of all the stuff I've built before this. And everything I built after this will build on this. So, yeah. I'm sure a lot of the viewers are going to really dig and love this build and they're probably going to want to follow along to see what other projects you're doing or enhancements that you do to this one. Can you tell us a little bit about how uh, they could uh, follow along? Yeah, so uh, if you want to see what I'm working on, sometimes I post stuff on Instagram. Um, I've got a YouTube channel I put projects on sometimes. Um, you want to just put links to those? or Cool. Um, Instagram and YouTube. I've got a website. I don't update it very often, but that exists. Uh, that's it. All right, you'll send me those links. I'll put them in the description. Cool. This is Patrick, New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. All Thanks right. for joining us. Thank you, Patrick.